Hello Internet, today we're going to be looking at how to make a six degree of freedom controller the wrong way. Uh, so a six degree of freedom controller looks at six degrees uh, and that's going to be X, Y, and Z for actual movement, but then also rotation. So yaw, pitch, and roll. Uh, and so there's the obvious way to do that. And that's sort of what we're going to look on. And then we're going to kind of talk a little bit about why that doesn't really work. Uh, so I've kind of set up a really basic scene. This is the spaceship we're going to be flying around. And yeah, that, that should be it. So what we need to do is I have already created a flight controller. So I can just add that here. It does exactly nothing. This is the script. So we're going to add six variables. Actually, let's just add, huh. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of this through. Let's add two. That may be too few, but uh, we're going to have a speed. And so this is going to uh, guess, I guess, or it's going to be how fast you actually move. This is going to be a lot of basic stuff. We're not, we're, this isn't something you're going to want to use in a game. Uh, depending on what you need, you'd either use a rigid body or you'd really you'd add more velocity handling. This isn't going to take velocity into account. It's going to be you're holding forward, so you'll move that far forward, which for, for our purposes works perfectly fine. Uh, and then we also need a rotation speed. And so we just give that, and that should be good. That's Those are the two things we're going to change. In this case, all three axes are going to have the same speed and rotation speed. Uh, so y'all pitch and roll will all be affected in the same way. There's no modifier there. And the same for speed. We could, we could change that if we wanted to, but that just is complicating things. So we're not going to. Uh, then we are going to store two things. We already have, actually, do we need two things? Nope, I think we're good. This should be everything we need. <laughs> and so what I can do then, is this going to work the way I, I so uh, we could do it using the transform, which is sort of what I'm on the fence of. So there's a, this transform like dot rotation and things like that. We could do that. Yeah, actually that, okay. Sorry, the, if I do it this, the way I was thinking, it would actually work. <laughs> and so I kind of want to show the wrong way. So what we're going to do is say calculate our rotation. So we're going to actually store our rotation as the Euler angles. Uh, and so the reason we do that, so here's our rotation. We're going to grab this transform rotation dot Euler angles. And so this is going to be your normal X, Y, Z. If you look in your inspector here, that's what you would see on these X, Y, and Z values. So it makes sense that you would want to say, say I want to rotate this. It makes sense that you would just be like, oh yeah, I just got to, if I want to turn it, I just change the Y and then it turns, right? But that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't really work because you're working on a sphere. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be implementing it as if you are changing X, Y, and Z, and not as if you are operating on that sphere and sort of see what happens. And for some reason, Unity has decided that it really needs to load this script compiling. Maybe it's because this project has gotten huge because I've just been throwing all of these like one off things into it. That might not have been a great idea. I may need to clean this up, <laughs> but anyway, that's not strictly relevant. What we need to get back to is this. So we have a rotation, right? What we need to do is add to that. So now that it's an, it's just a vector, we can actually just do rotation plus equals uh, a new vector three of our yaw pitch and roll. So let's say we just want this to automatically rotate our ship uh, and we want to rotate on our, around the y-axis let's say so we'll just do zero and then we'll do uh, speed rotation speed sorry 
times our time delta time. And then we'll also just have zero there for the Z. So this is just going to increment our Y axis. Then we want to say transform.rotation equals quaternion.euler. Uh, so we're taking an Euler angle and converting it back into the quaternion that rota uh, transformation rotations expect. And so this is just going to increment that Y component. So if I go back here and make this a non-zero thing, like say 10, we're going to rotate, which is great. That, that's what we want, right? And for all intents and purposes, this works or should work. I should stop talking. Yeah, so we're rotating and it's just going to keep going. So that that seems fine, right? It's just incrementing y and there's there's no issues. And we could actually do that for each of them and that would probably be all right. Uh but we're going to get into some issues quickly. Uh, so, what I want to do is I think I want to tie these to inputs. So, we're going to separate these on two separate lines. And effectively, I'm just going to copy this rotation speed onto each of them. But then, uh, yaw, pitch, and roll. So rotation around the x axis is going to be our yaw. No, rotation around the, the x axis is our pitch. <laughs> Sorry, pitch is up and down. Uh, yaw is side to side and roll is laterally. So input dot... Uh, what do I want? Get axis? Yeah. So this is our x axis. So this is going to be our pitch. Uh, I don't have these created yet. So we're going to have to set up our inputs quick. But other than that, this should get things working. And so really to demonstrate what I want, we probably don't even need to add momentum. We can do that just as like a little afterwards thing. But anyway, uh, for this one, we want our yaw. So Y axis, what we were just doing, we want that to be our side to side. And then we want roll, which we don't even need to implement to get this effect working. You just need to affect two axes for this to happen. Uh, but that should be good. We, everything should be fine. So if I save that, everything's good. We just need to actually connect everything. So here's our inputs. Nothing else in this project is using them. So I should just be able to pull them apart and plug things back in. So we're going to trim this down to six. Horizontal, vertical, fire two. This is going to be our yaw, our pitch, and then our roll. So I'm going to do yaw and pitch bound to the mouse. And then our role will be Q and E, Q and E. And so that way, just when you're doing WASD, you can just hit Q and E and it rolls. But we don't really, did I do that right? Yeah. All right. So we those can go away. This is going to be the X axis for our mouse movement. For pitch, uh, we actually want this to be the Y axis. So pitch is on the Y. And then yaw is on our X for our mouse movement. And then I can take those off. That should be good. These may not be correct. <laughs> Pretty sure this is going to be super sensitive. We'll find out. Ha, it's oops. I don't really want to save this. <laughs> so hopefully those all get in yaw pitch roll, cool. So I should just be able to run this then. And we should see, oh, yep, it's quite sensitive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn those down. <laughs> All right, so now that those are not ridiculously, ridiculously fast, we should be able to do this again. The sensitivity may still be too high. Yeah. <laughs> Welp, that is, that is ridiculous. 
Oops. All right. I should have done this beforehand. That was silly. All right. Turn those back down to one. This should be way less sensitive. Okay, it's inverted, but that's fine. Uh, so we can go up. And I think we might be stuck. Nope. Okay, we're upside down. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, watch my mouse cursor. You can see it's going to the right there, but we're turning to the left. The camera, that circle came into our vision from the left. But if I flip back over, uh, however I do that, this, it goes the right way. And so this is what's called gimbal locking. It's where um, you are rotating around three axes. You have effectively three planes that you're rotating on, but you rotate each of those. In this case, we're rotating each of those separately. So as an example, let's just create, what's the best way to do this? <laughs> Let's create three planes. So plane one, plane two, and plane three. So this is going to be our X. Here's our Y. And then here's our Z. And so if I put the Z like uh, that, is that really what I want? This, uh, it does, it does, so it doesn't, the naming isn't particularly relevant here. What is relevant is that we get something that does that. So we have these three planes, right? So, so if I want to rotate and like drag something along, say the X axis or whatever, we can actually move it around the circle like that. But what can happen is what I just fixed where we can take say this X or the, the X rotation of this plane and rotate it down so that it's level with another plane. At this point, there is no way that I can do a roll because both of these X or both of these planes have aligned. So when this happens, your roll becomes the exact same as everything else. And there's a number of other effects. So say you are in a shooter and you look up your rotation actually changes the force of your rotation is going to change slowly because you're looking further up than down uh, and that's just because you're you're looking on that plane and so as it becomes more and more in alignment it becomes more and more something that you don't really care about and so that's sort of that's gimbal locking effectively it's when each of your your gimbals each of these planes align when they become in line with one another your things don't really work and so that's sort of that's sort of what i was trying to emphasize here i'm not entirely sure that this is coming through in 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 the video it's kind of hard to to demonstrate this uh let's see here I, maybe if we add some velocity maybe if we make it so we can actually move so we'll do this dot transform dot position plus equals our input get axis of our vertical so just our vertical movement uh, times our speed times the time delta and so that's going to be our forward position but we also need the forward vector dot forward like so. So that is going to move us forward or backwards. And then we'll do a horizontal as well. Those should already be configured, so that should be fine. For horizontal, we'll just plug in the right vector. So this will be relative to ourselves. We'll do our right. And so that should get us the, the forward and backward movement. So we should have thrust effectively. And so if I add that now, I can disable that really crappy example of a gimbal. I actually have one on a keychain that I, I have at work and I was kind of hoping to bring it home, but yeah, <laughs> forgot. So yeah, but anyway, it, it's, it's an interesting problem. It's, 
<laughs> before I knew anything about 3D graphics or anything, I, I was a big fan of Descent, the video games from the early 90s or late-ish 90s. And so that was sort of what I kept trying to remake. And every time I'd do it, I would totally screw this up because I would do rotations like I just did here. Those don't work. Uh, the solution is what's called a quaternion, where you add a fourth dimension, which is that's what the W in a quaternion is. That's the, the fourth dimension. And so it actually gets your, your rotations to be uh, to avoid the gimbal locking. Effectively going one dimension above what you're trying to measure, uh, at least if I'm recalling what I learned two years ago correctly, if you add an additional dimension above what you're trying to measure, like we, we want three measures to be independent of each other, X, Y, and Z. If we make it four dimensional, then that fourth dimension prevents us from getting locked. Uh, theoretically, if I'm I'm not sure if I'm recall recalling my linear algebra correctly, but I believe adding in one additional one will get rid of that. That may, may need a verification. But anyway, let's see if we can fly now. I should have uh, uninverted my camera. Also, this is really fun. We get, we get kind of locked. Uh, so what happens is like when I go up to the bottom, it kind of uh, locks the camera. But then, yeah, <laughs> but then it does weird things like it gets locked, but then I can go back down and it just keeps going forward. Those are uh, interesting. But anyway, we can we can kind of fly around here. It's a little bit uh, sensitive because this is there's no state tracking at all in this. Uh, so even if we try to track this state oops i am inside it <laughs> but even if you try to track the state or if you try to do something that has would normally be impacted by state like velocity that isn't happening here and so it feels very jumpy uh, i will post the the script for this in the description so you guys can check it out and kind of play with this yourself i would encourage you to uh to try to fix this to make this better don't use rigid bodies and, and yeah, try to try to fix it yourself. See, see if you can actually get this to work. I mean, I suppose you could use rigid bodies, but the problems kind of a, in a different space at that point, because then you're the, the physics is handling it for you. That introduces other problems too. But uh, anyway, this is sort of what I wanted to cover. It's just a, a really basic way to, to do flight, but it doesn't, it doesn't always work. Uh, also, the rotation is very weak. Uh, and it doesn't really rotate the way the way you would expect. So, yeah, I am upside down and sideways. But meh. anyway, this is, I guess, six degree of freedom controllers the wrong way. And I will be showing how to do this better in a video very soon. So or Maybe I guess better is the best way to d describe it. I don't know yet the best way to do this. I have created a lot of these because, like I said, I wanted to create a descent like game, and then a bunch of uh, actual companies started making them, so I got less motivated to do that. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it here. You guys can play with the script on your own time or write it yourself. It's not that difficult. Uh, and if you come up with some cool solutions for how to actually implement this, I'd love to see them. Otherwise, uh, check out the, the actual way that I usually do this in the next video. We'll probably cover both rigid body solutions, so a physics-based one that will have velocity and torque and things like that, as well as one that just uses basic quaternion math. So that's going to be coming up shortly. But yeah, that's it for this video. So. If you guys have feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I'm always looking for ways to improve. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, see internet.